Hello, and welcome to another episode of SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast for the Realistic SLP. And today we have an expert in the field of childhood apraxia of speech, Jenny Viorum. Hi, Jenny. Hi, girls. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I feel like we took a little long to organize this, but um, thanks for being patient with us and thanks for coming on. Yay. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Cheers. 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 So before we get into our lovely topic of the evening, which of course is childhood apraxia of speech, Maria, what are you drinking? Well, I just want to cheers. Jenny Biorum, thank you for being our SLP sponsor. Cheers to all of us. Yeah. Uh, So I am. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm drinking the Kim Crawford wine. Uh, I always blank on this Sauvignon Blanc, but Mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, it's very delicious. And I saved my last glass for this. So I'm excited. Very nice. I I I go drink it. Yeah, I'm in the cheersing mood for the sponsorship. I was like, oh, it's all about the glass, you know? Yeah, she's got a champagne glass. Maria is ready to celebrate. I wish I could celebrate along, but um, I'm drinking yep. water because I am 36 weeks and four and five days pregnant. So Woo-hoo. no wine I, for me. I'm drinking coffee because I'm exhausted. So we mm-hmm. <laughs> we good. all have something. We have something. It yeah. may not be wine. Yeah. But. <laughs> It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. And we talk about this on the podcast, too, about being cognitively flexible. So we're choosing a drink of choice. I have selected this Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Deb Sauvignon Blanc. Deb <laughs> H2O. H2O. And Jenny needs some caffeine. So we're good. Yeah. yeah we're good. So what are what are the elements of this Sauvignon Blanc? Is it light? Is it crisp? It is. It's very light and crispy and it's like nice on the hard palate. And I just feel like it's soothing. And I've paired it also, of course, with water. So Mm -hmm. I'm feeling nice. Nice. Do you vote drink it or sink it? Definitely drink it. This is a good one. Very nice. Tim Crawford, Sauvignon Blanc. Get it. All right. So for those of you who don't know, Jenny is an expert in the field of uh, apraxia. And she also, in addition to treating apraxia, has a full line of materials that are beneficial to um, the treatment of apraxia of speech. And I personally couldn't live without them. I don't even know which is my favorite deck, but I would say most recently I use the R deck the most because I got a lot of R kids. But I also love the prosody deck that one i feel like i can use that one with all of my clients because there's cues for loudness for increasing your pitch for speeding up for slowing down um so really great tools to utilize in your speech therapy session and i'm wondering if jenny can let us know what are some indicators of a childhood apraxia of speech well, when you messaged me, you told me you wanted me to list three indicators of childhood yeah. of speech. So, but the problem with that is, is that there are 11. Oh, okay. and <laughs> yeah, there's 11 indicators of childhood of praxis speech. And the problem with me saying that there's three or giving you three right, is misleading right. because um, technically a child has to have four of the 11 in order to get a diagnosis of childhood. Depression. See, had no idea. I did not know that. So thank yeah. you. Here I am just being like three, 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 trying to stay organized. No, 11. All right. So let's, what are those? Oh my gosh. I didn't write them all down. You're going to really quiz me. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I don't want to quiz you. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> tone it down. I'm drinking wine. We're not quizzing anybody. We just want to hear number three, three about three of 11, you know, just get us curious, Jenny. Oh goodness. I could probably list all 11. I'm, I I'm think confident one of the you big, biggest ones that, that most speech therapists fall back to when they think a child may have childhood apraxia of speech is that inconsistency. Um, and 
More importantly, it's inconsistency on repeated trials. So if I'm giving a CIS assessment to a child, um, I could give the Goldman Fristo as part of the assessment, but it needs to be a dynamic assessment. So, you know, if I ask the child to say house, um, I can even model it. They don't have to say it spontaneously but I need them to say it at least two or three times. So I can determine if that child um, is being inconsistent on repeated trials. So typically we do a static assessment when it comes to articulation. We give the Goldman Fristo, we listen, we listen to them produce it, we write down the errors they have, and we move on to the next word. Here we are listening for the errors they have, if specifically for what we're talking about right now, inconsistency. So that's why we want those repeated trials. And then we want to cue them and see what cues, you know, we have to give them in order for them to get it correct. So that's the difference. I mean, there's so much more that goes into a CAS assessment and understanding if a child has childhood apraxia speech or not. So that would be one. Right. Um, another big one is vowel distortions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the kids we see uh, have vowel distortions um, or substitutions. Uh, another one would be segmenting. So they have inappropriate pausing uh, in between. So they almost sound like robots if they're speaking in fuller sentences or multiple words where they might pause in between words, they might pause in between syllables. And that pausing is not appropriate. When we speak, it's almost sing-songy, it's connected. We um, change our prosody. Uh, so that, that segmenting kind of goes along with prosody and that would be another one that we would see is deficits in prosody. So children may not be able to um, they may not have good vocal flexibility or a good vocal range. They may not be, they may be putting the wrong stress on the word, uh, on the word in a sentence. What are we doing today? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just an inappropriate stress. So those would be a handful of them, but I think it's really important for everyone to understand that just those alone can't diagnose childhood apraxia speech. And, um, I have a great um, informal assessment on my website that I sell um, that goes through all 11 of those and it takes you through everything that's required to get a diagnosis. Oh, very nice. I'm definitely going to get that. All yeah, right, it's we'll very link that in the show notes. <laughs> okay. <I'll laughs> that, so. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I think that what, what you mentioned first is the... Um, the inconsistency. So I think that when you're in school and you're learning about these, uh, all different, all different disorders, that's the one that I regurgitated. I feel as though that yes, there that's a were good one. islands of clear speech. <laughs> There's inconsistencies and then islands of clear speech and, and then groping. Don't right. forget the groping and I was groping. on the groping. And yep, those, that's... those were like the two things in the definition that I feel like I wrote multiple times on multiple exams in like every fill in the blank. Um, so it's nice to hear your more thorough explanation. So, so using that and like, you can have a, a, an assessment, but you need to hear the word multiple times to hear if there's any variation in that production and what type of assistance that they require to make it what you want, right? Exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly what we want. Very and nice. I liked, I liked hearing about the prosody too. So that was very interesting to hear. Yeah. Prosody is a big part of childhood apraxia speech. And, you know, um, I would say it's impacted all of my clients at some point, but it's one of those things that we work, we begin working on yesterday. And, and it's also one of those things that many, many, many kids have come to me because they have a diagnosis of childhood apraxia speech. However, nobody ever worked on prosody with them. They only worked mm -hmm. on speech sounds. And so prosody, you know, was never worked on. And we want to work on prosody right away. You know, if we suspect childhood apraxia speech at the age of two, we want to start prosody. If we get, have a diagnosis at the age of two or three or four, we want to start working on prosody. So, um, so that it's not left 
it just becomes harder to teach as the child gets older and, and they, then they practice it wrong and then right. they motor plan it wrong. And then, you know, then it becomes a thing. So you could also model appropriate prosody too during the speech sounds like boom, boom, or something. If you wanted to work on something like that's that. exactly right. You're just going to work on it all together at the same time. So you're just going to work on changing prosody and working with the children to change prosody. And that's a big part of DTTC. Um, and you know, that's going to, that'll come back to my tip a little later in the program. Perfect. And then I loved how you mentioned uh, vowel distortions because I feel like as speech pathologists um, in general, uh, we just focus so much on consonants and and vowels just don't get the attention that they deserve. I feel like in both in phonological disorders, articulation disorders, and and um, motor planning disorders, it's just the uh, vowel, we don't realize how that does impact the intelligibility of the word. And sometimes I think when you can't figure out what's wrong, why that sounds strange. It's often the vowel. Yeah, I agree. And I also, good point. Yeah, I think it's a great point. And I think that, um, you know, a lot of speech therapists have not been ear trained to listen for all those different vowels. And I always tell my students when I have a student um, in my clinic or with me, I always tell them, I was like, you know, listen to the vowels, what vowel did you hear? And then I compare it to what I said. And then I'll ask the parent what they heard. So I'm also vowel training or ear training my parents too, Mm -hmm. because, because parents never hear the vowel distortions. They just are like, what's going on? But they don't realize that it's It's the vowel. It's something. Yeah. It's something, but we don't know exactly what it is. And then there, once I, you know, pointed out that the ah is supposed to be an O, then they're like, oh, you know, but I think the ear training is kind of hard, but I do like to pin it against different people in the room in a non-COVID world, um, yeah. just so that everybody can see see what each person heard. Yeah. Nice tip. And I don't even think that I really knew a lot about vowels until I became an experienced speech pathologist. Like I didn't really think about them that much and I didn't discriminate against them that much. So I think it's quite difficult for not only just a student, but a parent to really pick up on that. That's because we had phonetics too. We're like, oh, macaw. Like how do you transcribe that? Right. That's how I started thinking about that class. I was like, whoa. I do not hear this. I do not hear what we're talking about. <laughs> I liked it because a lot of the symbols were Greek. So I was like, oh, the I know that you want letter, me to no? write what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think that I have a phonological disorder after I'm like, trying to segment all these words and, and um, <laughs> you're like encode them. Over- overthinking it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess we started branching into what should you do, but let's hear maybe three do's of, um, of, uh, childhood apraxia of speech. What as, um, therapists should we, or speech pathologist, I'm fine being called a speech therapist. I, I just, too. Personally, it doesn't bother yeah. me at all. You can call me a speech teacher too. I don't I'm, care. Yeah. I don't, I don't care at all. Okay. I like like what my shirt says though. S L P A F. Yeah. You can can call me that. You can call me, (laughs) you can call me Jenny Bajoram. I don't care. I'm good. I I kind of like Jenny Bajoram. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Yeah. I'm like, uh, okay, so I, I jotted a few things down that first came to mind. And, um, one of the very first things is to, you know, stop overthinking apraxia therapy. It's really quite actually much easier than you think it is and, and choose fewer targets. So 10 or less targets and people are mind blown, but when I tell them this and they're like, wait, what, how many targets and how many times do you work on those? And when do you add new targets? And so, you know, 10 or less targets, you may work on one of those during a session. You may work on all 10. Our goal is to get high repetition um, with correct productions. And if a child can't do it, can't do it, can't do it, take it off the dang list. Don't make them practice something that they can't do. You know, our goal is to get them successful. So they, I use a rubric and they may be at a seven or an eight, but my goal is to quickly move them to a five and then a four, and then ultimately get that down to a one. Mm -hmm. So fewer targets, make it easier on yourself, make it easier on the child. We all want to feel successful. So that would be my number one tip. 
Um, my number two tip would, we're going to focus and work on the sounds the child already has in the repertoire, not the sounds they don't. So unlike phonological or articulation, we might pull sounds that they're having a difficult time with. That's not what we do in childhood practice of speech. We take an inventory of all the sounds they have in their repertoire, and then we put together words using those sounds. Um, and then because can you imagine how frustrating it would be as a child with childhood apraxia speech that can't make these sounds at all and you create words with those sounds in them? Yeah. It doesn't yeah, exactly. make any sense. No. It doesn't make any sense. So we have to create targets with those sounds in them and we need to create targets that they are, that we know that we can teach them and that they can be successful at. So we don't want to start way out of the ballpark. We want to start with in the bar ballpark. And then the third one I said is a uh, third do is to cue, cue, cue. Any kind of cue that you could possibly come up with. Tactile, um, uh, metaphorical cue. You, you, I mean, like a lot of times if I'm working on something with the word knee in it, I'll grab the child's knee, like mm -hmm. knee and I'll grab their knee and that cues them to do that knee. Or if we're working on the word, a word with like no in it, like snow, I'll tell them my finger down my arm like a snake and then I'll do the sign for no and go right in their face you know just to kind of give them those cues that we're putting the snakes on and then no together I know um uh, I I did therapy um a couple uh, I think it was maybe last week or the week before I have a little boy that wanted me that wanted to send some stuff to Jupiter but he could not say Jupiter and um so I go hold on and I ran to my fridge and I grabbed a stick of butter and I said, you tell me this word, butter. And he goes, butter. And I go, butter. And he goes, butter. And I know I want you to go, Jew butter. And he goes, Jew butter. And I go, you just said Jupiter. But, and so right. just really breaking it down and thinking how you can cue, whether it's my speech sound cues, whether it's touching their mouth, grabbing their knee, showing them something, but cue, cue, cue. It is so important for kids with CAS. Right. And I love that, like, right. outside of the box thinking, like, okay, yeah, butter is not Jupiter, but it does, it, it, those are similar sound sequences. And when said together with the correct prosody, it does sound good enough for us to understand what this person is saying. So, like, I think this goes with your don't overthink because it's like, it doesn't matter that it's not the exact, exact thing. Yeah, and, and I think it's close as, that it's understood. Close. So you're like message understood, no communication breakdown. Right. Moving and then on. I go, and then I can go back and teach the correct prosody of it. So yeah. we might do Jew butter, but if we go Jew butter, so it's a little bit faster, Jew butter. And so then he, huh. I mean, he's got it now. I'll ask him, I'm like, what's that plan to get in Jupiter? And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and just to kind of give him, oh, what are, what is the sound sequence that I already have motor planned that will mm -hmm. help me with this new motor plan you're trying to teach me? Yes, I love that. That's an excellent tip. And then what you said before um, about choosing what they have already in their phonemic repertoire is important, I think, because as speech pathologists, we're like, what's the pathology? What's wrong? Let's work with what's wrong. And we always like think about like, we find out what's wrong. And then that's a lot of times where the goals are written from and where the therapy begins from. But starting from somewhere where the child is successful, the goal with apraxia is the consistency. It's not the production, whereas it is for articulation and phonological disorders. Yeah, so. it's about that consistency of movement and that and the child being able to motor plan that movement. You're right. Yeah. Good that one. Go Deb. I'm into these questions and I really like these tips. Yeah. Jen I would have never thought of Jupiter. <laughs> now I have to yeah. start thinking like way more, you know, just like what what sounds like this. What, I'm how, what's still thinking shortcut? about vowels and even yeah, just the word like wow a comment like being able to say a comment and I noticed one of my kids said a comment today I'm like wow that's like a nice skill and I'm like and that's like such a great word too to just incorporate and now I'm thinking about prosody too these yeah. are such great tips yeah you gotta just dig in and really think about it yeah I pulled that one out I was sitting there and I was like <laughs> how am I gonna teach this kid this word I'm like hold up butter hold on let me go get the stick out of the fridge yeah so, 
Yeah. So start thinking about similar sound sequences, everyone. What does it sound mm. enough like? What does it sound like? What's the co-articulation of it? I always talk about co-articulation. You know, what does it sound like? What does it sound like? Yep. Nice. Did we do all three of your do's? Yeah, we did. All right. we did fewer targets, work on the sounds the child has in their repertoire, and Q, Q, Q. Right. And then get rid of it. I liked that so much that you're just like, just drop it. We don't, another thing about being an SLP is the whole like perfectionist mentality where it's like, but what do you mean? We didn't even, we didn't get it. So how are we going to get rid of it? Well, it's, it didn't work. Next. Put it on the back burner for now. We'll come back to it, you know, but just don't continue to frustrate. So, right. Yeah. And you want the patient to feel successful in therapy. So and success builds on success from that standpoint too, yeah, just from like an emotional standpoint, you're absolutely. working with someone and we're expecting them to communicate with us. Right. So we have to make them feel safe and a plate and establishing rapport too is very important with your client. Yeah, exactly. It goes, especially if you're going to be in their face, like, no, like, <laughs> and I'm just going to snap at you. Face. Yeah, I know <laughs> I'm in faces too. I'm like, let's get into it. Yeah. yeah. And I use that knee trick a lot. There's a lot of words that have knee, pony, money, um, um, honey, honey, bunny. So yep. that's very useful. I do do that. Yeah, I do do that. Look, Maria, I used your joke. Do do. <laughs> oh, Maria's so proud. <laughs> I wrote that. Maria joke wrote first. that joke for me. <laughs> I here's the evidence. It says Deb do do. Because <laughs> Deb is pregnant and is going to get ready for a lot of doo doo. And I'm right. like, I, you do the doo doos because you got to get ready for that, where I could just sit and chill and have my wine and do the don'ts. Well, I think so. Mike is going to be doing all the doo doos. <laughs> well, in charge of getting rid of the doo doos. But I yeah. want you to post that on your Instagram. <laughs> oh, I will. I told him, I, like, well, we already established, you know, roles and responsibilities of the parents. So he's on it. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah so what what's up next maria yeah so th- if you could tell us jenny three don'ts all which right I know, so, yes no i didn't mean to interrupt you sorry maria. no worries um, i was saying without just reversing what you said like don't do like <laughs> keep you know stop no, overthinking I've, don't I've, overthink you know i've got three other ones you got so. three other ones awesome the, yes the first Fresh one ones. is and i teach this to my students too well i teach all these things to my students but don't segment kids with apraxia already sound like robots they already segment so you know if, i see so many speech therapists who are like listen to the word pot pot spot no we are not doing that because because we can backward chain pot, 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 spot, or we can forward chain. Um, oh gosh, now I don't know. Can, 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 candy, but we don't want to do can D because that's going to teach them that motor plan mm-hmm. to segment. So we don't want to segment. Number two was don't send homework home until you're ready, until the child's ready, until you've trained the parents. So um, this, I kind of had a fail this week with a family that I'm doing therapy with. We're working on the word um, on, and mom sent me a video and he said it five times and he's going on, uh, ah, n, uh, ah, ah. And I'm like, ah. Yikes, so yikes, are you like, ouch. Okay, you're just practicing it wrong you know, I need you to give him way more support. You need to be saying it with him and don't let him do that intrusive schwa that on. Uh, so it's so important because that child's going to come back to you and then you're just going to be correcting the motor plan. So oh I gosh. really don't send a lot of homework home with childhood apraxia speech therapy, unless I have fully trained the parent at home. And this right. is kind of a hard situation because they're a newer client and they're over, um, teletherapy and it's just harder so yeah it's hard because lots of parents want to feel like they're doing what they can do and they'll also they'll ask me for homework and then I just tell them you know honestly I just want to wait until I feel confident in the the session and then they can just practice what I already feel like they're good at because I don't need you to keep practicing it incorrectly yeah and form a bad habit wrong exactly and then I've got more work to do by undoing that yeah. So, and then my third one would be um, work on targets that aren't f- 
functional. So I had a little guy mm, come to me. I tell the story. I had a little guy come to me and um and he had a diagnosis of childhood proxy of speech. I said, What what's your targets you're working on? Mom goes, We've been working on tuna. And I said to mom, I said, Does he eat tuna? Is, <laughs> yeah. Does he love that fish? Name, <laughs> yeah, is your dog's name tuna? Do you like to fish for tuna? Why are we working on tuna? She goes, I don't know. This little boy couldn't say mama, dada, hi, and bye. Right. Yeah. Oh. But he was working on tuna. And so, so I sad. don't want you to get caught up on sounds or specific um, syllable shapes. So only work on words that are meaningful, powerful, um, and functional, period. I don't want to hear words. So what I always say to people is when they tell me they chose a target, I say, why? What's your why? Well, that's the t- tuna is the dog's name. Awesome. Great. Yeah, great. Sign us up. Yeah. Right. Sign us up. So, <laughs> I not like three like, do nots. You don't want to hear like T you. I wanted to, to pick T in the anterior position and the N in the medial just to get, you know, a CVCV word. Like we don't want to hear that. Mm-mm. No, I want to know what sounds they have in their repertoire. And I'm going to create words that is going to help them communicate with their friends, their family and and give them some power words. No way. Go away. No, no. You know, stop whatever. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. My turn. Give me things. Yeah. Like yes. Yeah. I love that. I like to, I like to ask sibling names because usually sibling names are real, really hard. And, and that's where kids always are like, Oh, well, uh, we call her this, like this, the sister's got a different name because yes. um, it's too much of a challenge to say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially if they can, or I help them come up with nicknames. I'm mean, like, mm-hmm. if brother, can he be Bubba? Or it, can Sissy be Momo? Or mm-hmm. can Sissy be Sissy? Um, or what can they be if their name's Mackenzie? I mean, like, you know, right. we're not yeah. going to get that word here in the next year. Let's yeah. find something that's yeah. going to be fun. What can we call Petunia instead? Yes. Petunia. <laughs> and Petunia. Petunia. <laughs> Tuna, there we go. Tuna, now you can work on tuna. All right, now it's functional again. It's functional again. Oh, Especially if you're a Harry Potter fan, you know, it's Ampetunia. Right. That's who I was thinking of, actually. Me too. Um, <laughs> so before we wrap up, we love to ask our guests if um, they can give us a tip or trick, just something that's no prep or low prep, anything that can be applied to life or therapy almost immediately. What do you have for us, Jenny? Yeah. So I don't know this is low prep because, but I think it's really important prep. Um, I said get trained in DTT, oh, yeah. so that's not low prep. <laughs> but, um, but I think that if you can if you can understand DTTC, it's going to make your therapy very low prep. Um, I do have a free DTTC hierarchy you can download and, um, from my website and print it out. Um, and we'll kind of walk you through the steps pretty specifically on what to do. Lovely. And we will also include that in the show notes. So if you're driving, right. don't you worry, you just check this later. Awesome. Yeah, just keep <laughs> driving, keep running on the treadmill, whatever you guys are doing or walking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great tip. I, um, um, Maria and I are both teaching college courses this semester, and uh, I had the students research DTTC um, when we did our apraxia module because it seems like it is the most research back approach um, apraxia um, therapy tip. Yeah, I would. I well, made tip, a huge technique. difference in my in my progress for my kids so yeah I gotta get trained I gotta do that after I have the baby you know too many online it's free online so and you I think you can get six CEUs from doing it oh perfect yeah there you go (laughs) did you see you won't be bored Deb no I won't get that training yeah boring yes no so Jenny also we like to end with a quote if you wouldn't mind to leave our listeners and us with a quote or a mantra or something that helps you feel maybe more grounded. Sure. So speaking of boring, um, (laughs) one of my favorite quotes is fear is boring. Um, And it's by Elizabeth Gilbert. And Elizabeth is is a writer. And she says every time she gets, when the fear builds up, the fear tells her to stop. And if we stop 
then we can't move forward and grow. And so the fear is what stops us. So she says, I make my fear boring because it's always telling me to stop. And I just really like that. I just like, I can't be afraid if things are scary, if things are hard, if, you know, if I'm taking a big leap or a big jump, um, it, it, I just have to push through that fear. Um, because, right. Cause stopping is boring. Hey, fear and stopping. They go together. Boring. <laughs> yeah. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, do I've learned so much and I'm going to apply all of this to my therapy. Great. Thanks for having me, you guys. Same Absolutely. here. Thank you. Good night.